Hello and welcome to Amiga Tech, the series in which I take a look at effects I've programmed for the Commodore Amiga line of computers. In today's episode we'll be looking at several classic demo and demo-like effects, all using the same underlying feature of the Amiga graphics chip, Bitplane Modulos. Let's look at that in action right now and then I'll explain how it all works. The first effect I created is the mirroring effect you see here. It's a classic, what can I say? Next, I created an effect that repeats a section of the screen. Then I added an effect that creates a vertical offset for the bitmap. And this is the last of the basic effects, a stretching display. Afterwards, I worked on more advanced effects. These use the previous four effects and sometimes other tricks to improve the visuals of the effect. The first of these is the water effect. Next I worked on an effect that kinda looks like a TV that turns off or on again. Still not entirely finished, I created this V-flip effect as well. Last, but certainly not least, is this scroll text effect I created. And to be honest, this was kind of the whole inspiration for the project to begin with, but all the other things I made were quite fun to do as well, so I'm not regretting adding so many things to my Modulo Tricks example. The effects I programmed for this video all make use of the same feature of the Amiga graphics chip, Bitplane Modulos. But what are Bitplane Modulos? The Bitplane Modulo registers are used to enable scrolling, specifically horizontal scrolling. When displaying a horizontally scrolling screen, the Amiga chipset needs to cut out a rectangle out of a larger bitmap. This cutout has a specific place in memory where it starts, it has a specific width, and it needs to skip a certain amount of data in memory to get to the next line to display. This last value is what is represented with bitplay modulos. However, because the Amiga chipset is very flexible, you can use these bitplane modulos to create all sorts of effect, such as repeating lines, skipping lines, reversing lines. A lot is possible. All the effects that you've seen in the video so far are based on this as its core feature. Now let's look at the basic effects that are enabled using Bitplane Modulos. These basic effects are at the heart of every single other more advanced effect that you've also just seen. The basic effects are the ability to mirror parts of the screen, repeat or stretch parts of the screen, and to display parts of the screen using a vertical offset. All four of the basic effects rely on setting the Bitplane Modulo registers to a non-standard value. Both the repeat and offset basic effects then reset this value back to the standard value afterwards. Updating and potentially resetting the bitplane modulo register values is done using the copper. The animation seen in the examples is achieved by updating the copper list in real time. To make the animation more visually appealing, a sine wave function is used to calculate the proper Y coordinate to wait for with the copper. Vertically mirroring the screen means using negative bitplane modulos. The value for these negative bitplane modulos is equal to the display width in bytes plus one full scan line. It should be pointed out that there is one additional thing we need to take care of when calculating bitplane modulos for any effect, and that is horizontal scrolling. If the display is set up to do horizontal scrolling, the hardware fetches two additional bytes per line. These two bytes need to be compensated for by subtracting them from the calculated bitplane modulo. Repeating a section of the screen is actually very similar to mirroring part of the screen. In both cases we use negative bitplane modulos to achieve the effect. The differences are in two places. The first is that rather than skipping back a single line as we did with the mirroring, we now skip a number of lines equal to the size of the block we want to repeat the remainder of the calculations stay the same. The second difference is that after we have displayed a full line of repeated data, we reset the bitplay modulos back to their default values so that the rest of the screen displays as normal. Bitplay modulos can also be used to skip a number of lines and this is how the offset effect works. The value to use for bitplane modulos for the offset effect is equal to the number of lines you want to skip multiplied by the bitmap width minus the display width in bytes. 
if horizontal scrolling is enabled, a further two bytes have to be subtracted. After displaying a single line of the offset effect, the bitplay modulos are reset to their normal values to make sure the display continues as normal. The display stretch effect is achieved by setting the bitplay modulos such that they cancel out a full lines of display. As such, the value to be used is simply minus the display width in bytes. The interesting part here is that this is pretty much the simplest of all the effects I've implemented, but I do think it is one of the more impressive ones as well. The first of the more advanced effects I've created was the water effect. The water effect is very common in video games and demos. It consists of a mirrored section of the screen at the bottom, where we usually see a different um, different palettes, some bobbing and weaving going on, things like that. Well, I was inspired myself, particularly by the Commodore 64 game Turrican 2, which is by no means the only game that does this kind of effect, and certainly not the only system on which these kinds of effects are shown. But nevertheless, that is where I first saw an effect like this. On the title screen, you had this mirrored bar at the bottom. It kind of looked like water, if you didn't think too much about it. This is my take on such an effect. Let's see how it works. The first step in creating the water effect is mirroring a small section of the screen. The next step of the water effect is adding some vertical motion. This is achieved by combining both the stretch and offset effects. By stretching some lines and using offset to skip some other lines, you can create an effective illusion of a vertical wave. This illusion is strengthened by then animating it using a sine wave function. The next step in making the illusion more convincing is adding horizontal motion. This is achieved using the display shift registers that are used in horizontal scrolling and a sine wave function to create a wavy look. The last step is changing the colors. To make the colors look more water-like, we can use the copper to reload the color palette at the right place. By selecting a bit more muted, more bluish tones for the colors, we can create an effective illusion of the bottom area of the screen being like water. This can be enhanced further by then animating through various sets of colors, changing on a scan line by scan line basis. This is what's being done here. These extra animated colors enhance the effect even further, making the illusion much more complete than it otherwise would be. The second more advanced effect I thought of was a, well, TV effect. Like a CRT that turns off or turns on. I've seen these in various games and demos before and I always wanted to try my hand at it. This involves rapidly shrinking the size of the display while changing the palette to be more and more white and then that nice horizontal fade out at the end. Let's see how that works. The first step in the TV effect is shrinking the display. Shrinking the display is achieved using the offset effect. Except here, we do not use one offset effect, we use several of them, each skipping a variable number of lines. As the effect progresses, we use the copper to change the position at which we do the offset effects and their sizes. This makes it so that the screen shrinks over time. Because the effect is so fast and occurs over very few frames, we only need a few of such points each frame to make it look realistic. This saves us both complexity and CPU time. While working on the effect, I found that the final fade out, the white line that fades out to black over time, was a lot more convincing if it didn't appear out of thin air. After some experimentation, I settled on having bars at the top and bottom of the shrinking display area that started out grey, turned to white and then finally ended up in the single line in the middle to fade out later. The next step was changing the palette of the picture, fading it to white as the effect progresses. Because the effect is so short in duration, this effectively creates a flash. This flash is somewhat reminiscent of what you see when you turn off an actual CRT though obviously not very realistic. The last thing to achieve is the final fade out of the center line that remains at the end of the effect. To make this part of the effect look more appealing, the copper is used to reload the single color of the line, 
only color zero is used. By reloading color zero with the copper as often as possible and using a fade out algorithm, we can have a line that fades to black from the edges to the center. The next more advanced effect I thought up was a vertical flip effect, which is in its basic form quite simple. You just display the screen in reverse. My version rotates it around and was inspired by the um, level loading scenes of Project X, which feature a similar rotating, vertically flipping screen. Let's look at how it works. Vertically flipping the screen is achieved by using a combination of the mirror and the offset effect. Of course, mirroring is only used when the image is required to be displayed upside down. The code for the effect determines at what raster line to start and end the effect and then decides how many lines to skip for each line displayed in the effect. The animation is then the result of using a sine wave function to determine what the start and end point of each frame of the vertical flip should be. The end result is a copper list that changes the bitplay modulos on every single line of the effect. Well, every single line apart from those lines that are black. Those lines are simply kept black and have no special copper list instructions. The last of the advanced effects I created is a wavy scroll text that fills the screen. This was actually inspired by a famous, or famous to me anyway, crack throw I saw on a, well, cracked copy of Turrican 2. No worries, I have the original by now, but the crack throw always was a very interesting effect to me. This is my take on how that uh, effect works. It involves a couple of tricks, such as repeating the scroll text several times vertically across the screen while only drawing one, using the blitter to create the vertical wave, etc. Let's look at how that works. The easiest way to explain how the scroll text effect works is by deconstructing it into its separate effects and then showing how they combine to make the whole. Let's start by looking at the text itself. The text is drawn to the screen by using a combination of the blitter and horizontal hardware scrolling. This combination of hardware scrolling and using the blitter is mostly done to make some parts of the effect easier to realize. You could, in theory, do the entire effect using just the blitter. A big part of the appeal of the effect is the vertical waving that goes through the text using a sine wave. This is also achieved using the blitter. Instead of blitting entire characters at a time, the blitter is used to blit single pixel wide vertical strips of the character offset by the sine wave to give this wavy effect. However, there's a trade-off here. The blitter in the Amiga is heavily optimized for drawing things that are 16 pixels wide or are a multiple of 16 pixels wide. When you choose to instead draw something that is one pixel wide, you are taking as much time as you would for drawing an object that is 16 pixels wide and only drawing a single pixel. In other words, drawing characters like this is 16 times as slow as it is drawing characters normally. That said, it's still faster than using the CPU to draw the same thing. This, however, leads to a bit of a problem. We simply do not have the time with either CPU or Blitter to draw an entire screen full of wavy characters like this. We need to cheat. And cheat we shall using bitplane modulos and copies of the single bitplane on which we draw the text. First, we use four bitplane pointers all pointing to the same bitplane of text at slight vertical offsets. This gives us four copies of the text. That is not enough to fill the screen, but it's a start. Then, we use bitplane modulos to do the rest. By setting the bitplane modulos such that they repeat sections of the screen already shown, we can fill the entire screen using just one bitplane, four bitplane pointers and the bitplane modulos. Two things remain, the colors and the highlights. Let's start with the colors. The color is achieved using the copper list and the fact that the text never overlaps other parts of the text. This means that all sections of the text are exactly one color. One color for each bitplane. Bitplane 1, 2, 3 and 4 each have their own unique palette entry and the copper list simply cycles those around to create pleasing gradients which leaves just the highlights. The highlights are achieved by having a special image of some vertical bars in bitplane 5 and only bitplane 5. 
Then we can set the colors where bit planes 1, 2, 3 and 4 overlap with bit plane 5 to be that of the highlight color and you get the effect as shown here. To make my life easier for coding this, I used Python to create several underlying tables that are used by the effects. Now it should be pointed out that most of the effects can and mostly do run in real time. The only thing that is really not running real time is the actual sine wave calculation, that is the sine wave table itself. But multiplying the figures from that sine wave table to get to the outcomes required and the fixed point behind that, that is all being done in real time. So these tables are mostly there to make my life easier. It's simply put, well, simpler to have Python spew out the numbers I need in a table than calculate it all real time. That said, there is a big exception. The scroll text one does really require its tables. It uses a lot of blitter and CPU time as it is. Now, the way I programmed it is extremely compatible. It could be made a lot faster if we take certain precautions to be able to make certain assumptions about the status of the Amiga, such as putting the code in chip RAM and running it with the Blitter Nasty flag or Blithog flag enabled uh, in the custom chipset, which would make the blitting a lot more efficient than the many, many Blitter weights I do now. But that is kind of besides the point. Even with that, we'd still need the tables we use to not run out of time. Nevertheless, I thought it was very interesting to see that the 68000 in the Commodore Amiga 500, which is not really all that fast, be able to do most of these effects so efficiently purely thanks to the power of the custom chipset. Make no mistake, the reason that I can go and use a simple sine wave table and do the rest in real time is, well, because the system doesn't use, well, any real um, bandwidth to create these effects. No pixel data is being updated except for in the scroll text effect. And this brings me neatly to a little section on performance and memory use. Basically, the basic effects use very little of either, and the more advanced effects are still fairly low key in the amount of CPU time and chipset time they use to achieve their effects. Granted, the scroller nearly uses a full frame to run, but as discussed before, it can be optimized quite a bit. But for example, the V-flip effect uses about 25% uh, raster time. The water effect uses about 10% raster time. The TV effect uses about 3% and the other effects use even less than that. Which means you've got a lot of time to play around with these effects if you want to do them and have other things run. In conclusion, I really like making these effects. It's just so nice to do something that is almost entirely based on the chipset. I love that kind of stuff on the Amiga. The hardware is what makes it special and it's fun to play around with that. I hope you enjoyed the video and that perhaps you've learned something new. Should you want to do some of these things yourself or perhaps see how they were done by me, you can check out the full source code, download the examples, etc. from my website where there is also an article explaining all of this in much greater detail. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like and subscribe. And if you want to add something to the comments, leave a nice comment or two. Bye bye.